What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some emulation on the Jetson Nano. Now it's been a little while since I've pulled this board out and done a video on it, but recently we got a really awesome operating system from the guys over at Tech Toy Tinker known as Ares. This operating system is going to work on the 4GB Jetson Nano, which cost about $99. That's the one I have here. We also have that USB 3.0 up front. Or you can opt to get the much cheaper 2GB model at $59, and this also works for it. There are some differences between the two boards. Obviously, you're going to get less RAM with the 2GB model, and you're not going to get as much I.O. as you would on the 4GB model. But keep in mind, they're using the same Tegra X1 CPU. And with this operating system, they were able to overclock the CPU to run at 2 GHz and the GPU to run at 1.15 GHz, so we will get better performance out of this. And it does have a desktop built in. So in order to get this, you're going to head over to Tech Toy Tinker's website. I'll leave a link for this in the description. He's got a lot of great little images over here that he's been working on for other single board computers. But at the More section, we can go to the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. And they've spent a lot of time working on this. They finally got it working for the 2 gigabyte model of the Nano, which is probably the way to go. It's only a $60 board, and it does come in a lot more powerful than the Raspberry Pi. Not a super huge community with it, but it's a great little single board computer. So this does support OpenGL and Vulkan. They've overclocked the CPU side to 2 gigahertz and the GPU up to 1.15 gigahertz, which does give it a nice little boost in performance, especially when it comes to the harder to emulate stuff like PSP and even GameCube. Now, if you check out Tech Toy Tinker's YouTube channel, he's actually got Xbox up and running on this. It's definitely not at full speed, but to see an original Xbox emulator running on an ARM board is still pretty cool in my opinion. All the way at the bottom, you're just gonna download it right here. You're gonna flash it just like you would any other image, put your micro SD card in the Nano, and boot it up. Keep in mind, this is a base image, so there's no ROMs or BIOSes included with this. So if you're not familiar with the Nano, what we have here between the 4 and the 2 gigabyte model is a Tegra X1 quad-core ARM Cortex-A57 CPU running at 1.43 gigahertz out of the box, but with this image, it does overclock that to 2 gigahertz. The GPU is based on NVIDIA Maxwell architecture. We have 128 cores up to 1.15 gigahertz with this image. On the 4 gigabyte model, obviously, we're going to get 4 gigabytes of LP DDR4 RAM. It does have Gigabit Ethernet and an M.2 key E slot, HDMI and DisplayPort, plus four USB 3.0 ports and one USB 2.0 micro B. When it comes to the cheaper version, we get two gigabytes of RAM. We still get Gigabit Ethernet and that M.2 key E. Only an HDMI port, which is totally fine. One USB 3.0, two USB 2.0s, and one USB 2.0 micro B. These are coming in at $99 for the 4 gigabyte model or $69 for the 2. It's really up to you. I would probably opt for the 4 gigabyte model just to future proof a little bit. But to tell you the truth, when it comes to emulation, I haven't noticed a big jump from the 2 to the 4 at all. Okay, so jumping right in here, I've got this installed to a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. As you can see, this boots directly into Emulation Station, and there is a desktop built in here. I uh, will show you that by the end of this video. This is the only theme available on the image right now. You can always add your own from other Emulation Station builds if you want to. Unfortunately, the Nano doesn't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi built in. You can always use a dongle, but I'm going to be using a wired Xbox One controller. And the stop theme does support video snaps, and from the options, we can actually install bezels if you want. There's actually a ton of options built into this system here. I really wanted to see how well this could handle emulators that don't work very well on the Raspberry Pi. And I did throw Dreamcast in here, even though we have ReDream for the Pi, but in this one we'll do some Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, PSP, we'll do some N64, and some GameCube. Like I mentioned, we do have GameCube emulation on this device. But first off, let's go with some N64. This is using RetroArch in the background, just like a lot of systems with Emulation Station, and we're using Mupin64 Plus with this one. So I just went ahead and turned the FPS counter so we could see what's going on. It's in the top right hand corner. So far so good. Even GoldenEye 007, which is really hard to run for an ARM board with an N64 emulator, is functioning really, really well on this system. It's looking great here, and to tell you the truth, I'm not sure how accurate that FPS counter is, at least with N64, but it's saying we're running at 60. It is changing up a little bit. If that's true, this is definitely some of the best N64 emulation that I've seen from an ARM-based single board computer. Taking it up a bit to Dreamcast, I'm using the Flycast core inside of RetroArch. 
FPS is still in the top right hand corner and as you can see this is definitely running at full speed. I mean we're getting some really good Dreamcast emulation. Moving over to Sega Saturn, and sorry about the video quality here, I tried to get it as best as possible, but it seems to be a little dark on this board, I'm not exactly sure what's going on with it, I know I got a little bit of glare on the screen, but it still gives us a good idea. This also handles Sega Dreamcast using the Yobase and Shiro Core inside of RetroArch. This is Sega Rally Championship, and we're running at 60, while well, 59, I'm definitely going to call that 60. Looking really good here for Sega Saturn. Alright, checking out some PSP emulation, I was really impressed by the performance here. Remember, we have that Tegra X1 chip, we're at 3x resolution, and as you can see we're kinda in the desktop here. It wasn't set to full screen, I could probably go into the settings and change it, but I just wanted to leave it like it was, just to show you how it performed. And even at 3x resolution, it runs Chains of Olympus at full speed. I mean, we do get some dips every once in a while, that really comes with a lot of different systems. But I'd say this is really playable, and if I didn't have that FPS counter on, I wouldn't even notice it. Now it's time to check out some GameCube emulation. This is actually using the standalone version of the Dolphin emulator. We have Beautiful Joe 2 running here at 60. This is the native resolution, Vulcan back in. Very impressive performance for the easier to run GameCube games. And I suspect this will get a little better as soon as he starts optimizing things. But I just kind of left it stock here to see what it would do. And so far, it's actually performing much better than I thought it would. Next up, we got another easy one to emulate, Wind Waker, and this one is running phenomenally. This only ran at 30 FPS on the original GameCube, and that's what we have here. I haven't noticed any skips or frame drops with this game. I will be playing through this a little more because I will have another video coming up on the Nano with this uh, whole emulation setup, but so far it's working really well. But Beautiful Joe and Wind Waker are easier games to emulate, so let's move over to something a little harder to do, and that's going to be Soul Calibur 2. And unfortunately, it did kind of fall on its face, as you can see. We're not at full speed, but it's definitely trying its hardest. I consider this a mid-range GameCube game to emulate, and I do like testing this on lower-end systems. Now, just to show you that we're still using the Nano, if I press Escape on my keyboard, I can exit this emulator. It's going to bring us right back into Emulation Station. But we do have a desktop built in here, so if I press F4 on my keyboard from Emulation Station, it'll shut this down, and we now have our Ubuntu desktop for the Nano. I don't have my Ethernet plugged in, and like I mentioned, this doesn't come with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth built in, but we can get online, we can update this operating system, I mean, you can watch YouTube videos at 720p, 1080, and when it comes to the Tegra X1 chip, this is still a very powerful little CPU, especially for desktop use. So this image from Tectoy Tinker has actually worked out really well for retro gaming because we have Emulation Station built in and a really decent desktop environment. So yeah, I mean, that's going to wrap it up for this video. That was just the first look and a little bit of emulation testing. I will have a couple more videos coming up. We will compare the 4 gigabyte and the 2 when it comes to emulation. But, you know, if you don't already have one and you're interested in picking one up, I will leave a few links in the description. And if you've already got one and you want to try this image out, link for that is also down below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.